You can think of an event like a radio station. The publishers may broadcast through it to subscribers that may or may not exist. The publisher doesn't have to know who is listening and what they will do with the information. They simply notify. The subscribers may choose which station to listen to, but it is not necessary for them to know who it is that is broadcasting unless they choose to do so. So here are some prerequisites. Having a general idea of these concepts would make it easier to understand the entire code. So here we have our sample scene, we have the main camera, we have a ground object, and we have a ball. So for our scripts, we have ball collision handler, a ball col uh, color controller, and a ball sound controller. So at the moment, nothing much really happens except for the ball just bounces up and down. Now, what I want to happen is whenever the ball hits the ground, I want it to change color and I want a sound effect to play. So how do we achieve that? Well, one way of achieving that with minimal hard references and, tight, uh, and loose coupling would be to use an event bus. Let's first make a new C sharp script. Let's name it event bus. Once that is done, we will count the event bus, remove one of the bigger, uh, remove the method start and update, and remove one of the bigger. Now we will add a using directive for system. Okay, so from here on, we are gonna create a new dictionary with type ASCII and a list of event handlers as the value. So let's call this subscribers by type oh, by type there we go so now we will create the three main methods which show the functionality uh, functionality of the event bus so first is the subscribe method second is the unsubscribe method And lastly, we have the publish method. There we go. Okay, so first off, let's start with the subscribe method. So in the subscribe method, we will take a argument of type event handler. Let's just name that event handler. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna check the subscribers by type dictionary. If the type we pass in via a generic, exists within the dictionary so to do that we will first create a type variable which is type of t there we go now we will do the check there we go so if the value we are trying to get via type does not exist in subscribers by type we will call subscribers by type and we will add it so type pass in the type and create a new list of event handlers and after that we will add the past event handler to the type there we go so now we move on to unsubscribe. So it's pretty much the same as subscribe, but we're just doing the opposite of what we did. So oh, can't forget that. So on unsubscribe, we will check the subscribers by type if this value of type, whatever type we pass in, exists in the dictionary, and it will give us the list of subscribers. If it is, uh, if it exists, if this returns true, we will simply remove oh, the given event handler. There we go. Simple as that. Now we move on to the publish. So the publish method 
takes in arguments. Uh, since we are using the event handler delegate, the publish method will take in arguments of type object, sender, and event args. Oh, event args. Okay. So first things first, as usual, you're gonna check if it exists. So we're gonna check if this value oh since we are not passing in a generic to this method, we are instead gonna use a uh gonna call event args and then we are gonna get its type. There we go. Now we have the list of subscribers. So if it uh, if the list of subscribers exists, we simply do a for each for subscriber in subscribers. We call since it is a de uh, delegate, we pass the sender and the event args. And there we go. That's basically it. So you have subscribe, you have unsubscribe, and you have publish. Okay, so now how do we access this? So there's two ways. You could use, uh, you could implement the singleton pattern, or you could simply just create a static class and create an instance of this event bus in that static class. Let's just call this the global bus. The global bus, change this into a static class. Move this, move that. Okay. Now we will create a new public static, make it read only, uh, event bus. It's called sync since it is a synchronous event bus. And let's create a new event bus. And there we go. Now we can call this from pretty much anywhere. So now there was actually one flaw with our event bus, and it's that. All of these, all three of these methods will return an error. That is because we have not, we have actually not uh, instantiated this dictionary. So to do that, you can simply create a constructor, event bus, well, I guess it's more general, event bus, and then we do subscribers by type, new dictionary, and then there we go. So one other thing, we're actually going to implement some generic constraints on the generic types. Where T is event args, args for all of these, pretty much. T and over here is fine, and there we go. Now, whenever we use these uh, this method, pretty much when we call subscribe, when we give a generic type, the generic type must be of type event args. So the next thing we have to do is pretty much go into these scripts right here these scripts and then connect them together by using our event bus so first things first let's go to our ball color controller and then we can simply do global bus sync subscribe but now comes our problem so we need a generic type and it's looking for a generic type but what type do we give it well thing is we actually have to make that first so making new classes makes making events more scalable in the long run so you actually know what uh, what types of events you have uh, on the outset so let's make a ball hmm ball bounced event let's call that the ball bounced event over here no saying oh. system we will inherit from event args and over here we will create fields of the arguments we want to pass by the event you can simply just keep it blank since as of right now we don't really need anything while well, color controller plus sync now you can subscribe to event of type ball dance event 
there we go we pass in our change ball color and we just have to do the same thing over here but on unsubscribe so always make sure to unsubscribe your events if you are subscribing so it's always good practice to do so so i'm just gonna copy paste that and bounce sound and there we go they're subscribed now they're finally uh now that these methods are listening to this event ball bounced event we will now on ball collision handler so we publish this will be the sender and we will pass ball uh, a new ball bounced event as parameter as the event args so now let's try this and now there we go the sound effect plays and the color changes so that was it so it's a really simple system that you can use uh, pretty much for the entirety of your application it is very simple to create and very simple to use okay so to expand this further uh, if you are working with designers or if you want a visual interface for your events you can integrate the unity events system uh, with the event bus so to do that you can simply do you can simply create a new c sharp script name it unity event bus then you copy all of the code from the event bus you paste it over here rename what needs to be renamed event bus then we add uh, using directive unit engine events and now what we have to do is we change event handler to unity event Type object and event args. Okay, so now we have a unity event that uh, has parameters that takes in an object and an event args. So over here it will give an error. That's because for an unity event we need to invoke. Now that we have a unity event bus, we need a subscriber. So let's create a unity oh, the event bus subscriber. So let's make this class abstract, make it inherit from one of Aver, that's fine. And then we will add a generic type, then remove these, and add the unenable and unsable methods. Then we will create a unique event. That takes in an object and an event args. We can just name this the response. Thank for the unit event bus yet. Let's call this unit. There we go. So now, global bus unit. We will subscribe to whatever type we give to this subscriber. So, and then we will pass in the response. There we go simple as that over here we unsubscribe the response okay so now that we have that all we have to do is pretty much um, create a new bounced event subscriber event subscriber we go then we will inherit from unity event bus subscriber and pass in the event ball bounced event and there we go so we have the subscriber uh, subscribing itself to the event on enable and unsubscribing on disable right here and then on collision we will call the unity bus a uh, unity event bus and publish the event and pass in the ball bounced event okay so now on bounce changes its color and it plays a sound so it's as simple as that and now pretty much this event subscriber you can use it everywhere so you can do let's say if you want to do 
a different sub uh, a different subscriber for each thing let's say you have multiple objects right and you want them to listen to one event you can use different subscribers on them or the same script on all of them depending on what event you have controller control play bounce sound there we go two different scripts still going to do the same thing there we go there we go 